I feel blessed for my career, as weird as that sounds. Um, as hard as it's been and the challenges that I've had to go through and probably still have to manage bits and pieces off now, it, it's, I feel like I've, if I didn't have any of that, I wouldn't be the person I am today and I'm really proud of the person I am today. So it's, it's a hard one, as much as you don't want to go through difficult times and some of the stuff I've had to deal with have not been fun. Um, I, I always see it as part of my personality is that journey. So, um, yeah, I feel like I'm probably a better, a better husband, better dad, better friend um, from the perspective that I've gained throughout that time and I've definitely built some form of resilience through that time to, to sort of ride with the bumps. And as funny as it sounds, I probably wouldn't change any of it. As you probably know, I'm a, a big footy thinker and part of my sort of struggle throughout my career has been switching off outside of the club. When you're not going through good times, um, there tends to be a lot of problems to solve and um, yeah, I always found it a bit difficult to be able to switch off when I left the club and that's probably been it's probably the back end of my cancer stuff as well in terms of just the perspective about footy as much as I love it is it's my workplace and um, there are more important things in life than your workplace really so my ability to switch off coming back home um, when Ruby's home is just so much better there's I want to find out what she's been doing for the day. I want to. I usually only get come back from the club. I only usually get maybe an hour and a half. So I get bath time. So that's sort of my time to to lock in dad mode. And um, that's I really enjoy it. So, um, but it's definitely it's definitely it's like anything in life. Everything any any big moment in your life changes your perspective or the way you see the world. And little Rubes has changed mine. It's um, for the better, definitely. I got to sometimes I get a bit nervous about taking her in the circle for the song. It's. Um, it's a if it's a big win that we've had that's that's quite loud. Um, we've had instances throughout the year where Ruby's bottom lift and Rosie started bawling. So um, we've got to pick our moments a little bit better. Me and Jack. A lot of the older boys that I played with said the, said this throughout their career is like there's there's not too many better feelings than post game having kids run around the around the rooms kicking footies and have them in the song and then even just seeing the boys after a win it's it does create a different environment in there and um, we're sort of lucky we're coming into that period where a large portion of our senior corps is coming into the age where they're getting married or getting getting married getting engaged or having kids how do you feel about being called a Carlton veteran it hurts <laughs> <laughs> when you're the third oldest it um, it I suppose you that's the label you get I haven't played that. I've what am I up to? 163 games, so it doesn't feel like I'm a veteran, but my body feels like I'm a veteran. That's for goddamn sure. How do you go with the double milestone basically every year? I feel a bit embarrassed having two in one year, if I'm honest. My family and friends, everyone put everything down for my one my 150th early in the year, and everyone made the trick trek. And um, I probably didn't get on the organising that this was going to be my 150th club and. I threw out a text message to a bunch of my friends and family the other day and everyone was like, oh, I'm sorry, I actually can't come this weekend. So <laughs> I think from my family perspective, I think it's only Nat and my brother Josh. 150 for Carlton. I was, um, I was searching for life membership, what that was for Shana the other day, and 150 in 10 years, which I ticked both of them off this year. So, um, yeah, they're big, big sort of milestones throughout your career. And I'm probably at the stage where as much as they're important ones, I'm sort of eyes are on a bigger goal at the moment. Are you, slash the playing group, a little bit surprised about how big the campfire at Ed Kernos has gotten? It seems like it's almost a mythical story these days. <laughs> yeah, I've been laughing with a few of the boys, because um, obviously little bits and pieces spurred out to the media and there's a fascination around us at the moment, which when you win in a lot of games, that's what happens. And um, there's ex-players that feel like they've been in different sorts of these meetings throughout their career and they're taking bits and pieces of probably what they've had and then adding it onto the story and then there's little bits that are spurting out from the boys that are probably getting taken a little bit out of context. Um, we didn't go on a nudie run, all of us, so... <laughs> it is funny, we, we're, we're laughing. We could probably say anything at the moment and people would probably believe it and we could turn this camp into something that is unbelievable, but to be honest, the camp was... I've had a few of them in my time, not so much the, the degree of going down to Ed's and having a, a bonfire, and, but it was it was about aligning with what we wanted to be, and we have actually been quite honest with that. We've we went down there and we wanted to hang our hat on something for the back end of the year. There's a lot of stuff going wrong at that time, and we wanted to be able to at least state by the end of the year that we we've committed to something, and um, as a group we'd be unified coming out of that that moment. And 
I've had plenty of those meetings in the past and they don't have much change. I think the difference with this one is that the group generally believed in what we were, what we were going after and I think that's showing now. We're two completely different people to when we first met when I was 18. Um, I couldn't tell you what was a good coach, what, what I was doing up there. I was probably just worrying about whether I was getting a game or not. Um, that was about as far as my thought process when I was 18. But what I can tell you about him now is um, he has every, every tool that a, a really successful senior coach needs. His ability to have hard conversations is, is outstanding, but his personal connection with each player is is really, really good, it's, it, and that's part of the role. Um, I've got a bit of a stronger belief about what um, good coaches do these days, but his ability to sit back and um, delegate to his team and then have the, the authority that when he needs to have it, he has it, is, is really, it's, it's very, very good. And part of why um, I'm so proud of the club in terms of, I feel like in the past, when we're having those those down moments in the middle of the year that we sometimes could be a little bit trigger happy on needing to change something quickly and um, I know from the playing group side we, we didn't want anyone else other than Vossi to coach us and we, we believed in what we were doing and I know at the time it didn't seem that way for everyone but um, we truly had a belief that if we just got a couple of things right we'd be okay and um, thankfully we had some, some really strong leaders um, in the sort of upper echelons of the club that um, that shared that belief and, and stuck to what we sort of started and um, backed Vossi in and um, hopefully we'll reap the rewards over the next few years. Nah, Sandoki the coach is, is, is so far off the cards. <laughs> um, uh, I feel like I owe it to my family to, to take some time off footy whenever that is um, and live a normal life, um, have my own decisions about when I go away and I don't know, when I have a beer, it's it's there's a lot of different bits and pieces that footy clubs they the just the the rules around it is I, I think it's quite hard to be a partner of. Some people might say different, but um, it's uh, it's tough at times, and I I want to be able to take some time to spend some time with Nat and Ruby and um, enjoy a bit of life outside of the game where there's no there's no pressure, there's no 24 hours thinking about what you're eating and sleeping and um, just be a dad, be at home for a bit. Where that ends up outside of um, that, I, I think I'm about to finish my degree, so um, hopefully work somewhere in the sort of business world and learn some new things and, as I said, get a new perspective on the real world. Um, and then if that leads me back to footy, that leads me back to footy, but I. I highly doubt it'll ever lead me back to coaching. Um, I don't think I could do that to Nat these days. Fair enough. And just finally, rolling on World Parade now, just about to turn back into Icon Park. Does it get old or you still love it? No, I love this drive. Um, I didn't take you past Peter Mac today, but uh, there's the there's the double. There's Peter Max at the start of Royal Parade, which um, when I'm feeling a bit sentimental, I roll down there and go around the roundabout and then come back up um, just as a reminder that of why I do what I do and um, I remember this drive when I was coming here um, to play in the, it was a trial game for under, I think it was for the national champs um, before I got picked in big country to play at Icon Park and I remember driving down the road, I remember the trees um, rocking up to the club so there's definitely a sense of nostalgia when you drive down here and having I've always lived that side of town, so I've, my drives always come straight down this road. So um, we have a nice facility that we get to drive into these days where big Carlton emblem on the front. So um, I don't think it ever gets old. There's probably times over over your career you probably take it for granted a little bit, but um, I feel like, again, I feel like I'm saying that I'm old and I'm nearly out the door, but um, no, it's just you appreciate what you get to do. and. I feel that that sense is probably for me a little bit greater than what it was earlier in my career because um, you just know that it doesn't last forever and at times you yeah, sometimes think it does, I would say. You've done well there, the whole drive before having to stop to think and drive to oncoming traffic, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> we had someone stall the car in front of us before. I, 
I don't know if you caught that on my <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>